a brief history of Molly. It began when I was born, and then now. Um, I can't wait for you. Our 2011 Blocker National Champion, Molly Seidel. It feels good to know that the amount that I practiced and put all the time into, that it really paid off. But I love the hills, so I'm, I'm very excited to go out. And Molly Seidel is a distance runner hailing from the United States. With a very early athletic interest in sports like soccer, basketball, field hockey, and alpine skiing, she eventually found an incredible talent in track, where she broke the mile record for St. Joan of Arc's Middle School in Wisconsin. With this newfound ability, she would begin her freshman cross-country season at University Lake School to try and compete with the best in the state. To her surprise, she would blow the rest of the field away, winning the state meet by over 15 seconds in her division. Describing this win as one of the best feelings she's ever had, she still stayed in tune with skiing during the winters, so she wouldn't commit to the track side of things until outdoor season, where again, she'd dominate the state meet in both the 1600 and 3200 meter races, running stellar times for her class too. Sophomore year played in pretty similar hands, cruised on by during her sectional meet, and won her state meet by nearly 30 seconds, a time that just about would've won the meet across all divisions. Her track season was also quite similar, with pretty consistent performances in the 16 and 3200. She would then snag another two titles and a solid 3200 PR. Junior year, on the other hand, was anything but cruising, as Molly would drastically drop her 4K time from a 14.33 down to a 13.42 at her sectional meet, only to win the state meet in a similar time, beating the second place finisher by over a minute. This was the catalyst that would influence Molly to ambitiously tackle her entire region at the Foot Locker Midwest Championships. Even struggling with injury, she still managed to take 11th place as the second highest non-senior. Without much hesitation, she transferred this energy to track fluently, running 4.51 in the 1600 and 1033 in the 32, both of which would be her times to win yet again two more state titles. Molly wasn't quite yet at that top 10 nationwide level yet on paper, but when she won her regional meet senior year at the next Foot Locker Midwest Championships, all of a sudden, she was in the running to become a national success. It's kind of cool now. It's I'm probably the least experienced senior out here, but um, yeah, it, it's exciting. The 2011 Foot Locker National Cross Country Championship Girls Division is underway. Molly's national debut was off to a quick start, as junior superstar Aaron Finn had taken the race out extremely fast in 520, with the chase pack about 7 seconds behind. It wouldn't be until about 10 minutes in that we see Molly in frame, also in no man's land trying to run a more diligent back half to catch Finn. Given her proficiency on hills, she's able to make a move on the big hill they went up on the first mile, and she's in the lead for the first time. On the contrary, Finn makes a massive stride to pass Molly on the downhill, but Molly takes back the lead with about 300 to go, and with a gassed Finn behind, she she strides it in to take her first national title for her national debut. Our 2011 Foot Locker National Champion, Molly Seidel! Erin Finn, a great effort. She'll finish second. <laughs> it, it feels incredible. It's kind of surreal. I mean, just the difference from a year ago to today is, I don't know, opposite ends of the earth. It's, it's incredible. I mean, I still can't believe it. Molly Seidel had gone from a somewhat known name in the Wisconsin running sphere to a national champion that had a stronghold on women's cross country. With this performance alone, she had garnered the attention of just about every coach in the country. And after her top five performance at the International Edinburgh Cross Country Race, she signed with Notre Dame in February of 2012. After securing her last two state track titles, Molly had cemented herself as an extremely talented, pragmatic, and determined athlete who was going to do fantastic things for the sport as she got older. At least, that's what she had in mind. Molly's first year at college was less than favorable to put it gingerly. Coming off an injury from her very last track race and supposedly dealing with mold in her college dorm, this was more than enough grounds to completely stifle Molly's freshman cross country season. As her 5K debut was mediocre and she got demolished at D1 Nationals, finishing 217th. With a non-existent indoor track season, she tried to bounce back and build a base for outdoor, but only partook in one major 5K, running 1605 at the Stanford Invitational. Sophomore year started out just as lackluster in cross country, albeit still with minor time 
time improvements and a few placements up from her last year's national championship performance. Like last year, she was not present for indoor, and her only major outdoor 5k race was certainly not up to par. With an unlucky string of injuries and blips in training, Molly was going to need to put something together soon if she wanted to have a promising collegiate career. Thankfully, for her junior year, she would display more than enough resilience to stay healthy for what was looking to be a promising second wind. Molly's junior year at Notre Dame had seemed to be the momentum she had been seeking since she lost her footing a couple years ago. Her first couple races back looked better than previous Rust Busters, and while her placement at the Wisconsin Adidas Invitational was less than favorable, she managed to place 19th at D1 Cross Country Champs, which for a 152 placement improvement was certainly in the right direction for the Fighting Irish. She would have a very consistent indoor season too, winning every 5k she entered, putting up solid 3k times, and would cap it off with a 6th place at D1 Indoor Champs in the 5k. For the first time time in years, Molly had built up a coherent, consistent base that would hopefully allow her to rip it come outdoor season, and with some very solid 10Ks under her belt, she would tow the line for a proper hoorah at the D1 Outdoor National Championships. Cute. Dominique Scott. She was absolutely the stick that stirred the drink. The competition for this 10K was quite deep, especially with talents such as Dominic Scott and returning champion Emma Bates. The race was tactical from the start, rolling 78 to 79s, and Molly just chilled behind the top five to let the rest of the field do the work. With about eight laps to go, the pack had decreased to 12 women, but Molly's position had remained virtually unchanged as she still had Scott, Bates, and Blasey lead the train. Bates tries to make a massive move by abruptly striding off with four to go, but not only does Molly catch her two laps later, she leaves her way behind, and now it's Molly's to take at all. With an extraordinarily confident last 400, she enjoys those last few seconds for her first ever D1 National Championship win. And this is a first time 10K championship run for a Notre Dame athlete. Here comes Dominique Dominic Dominic Scott Scott Payne. Payne. Comes the program in these semifinals, the women's 4x400 relays. Don't miss them. We're right back. Molly Seidel was now a national champion in the collegiate world, winning the 10K solidly by 7 seconds and winning Notre Dame's first ever national title for track and field. With nothing but momentum since the beginning of her junior year, everything fell into place the last mile, and with one more year to go, she knew she had to grab a cross-country one for her final season. And not only did she accomplish that, here's how easy she really made it look. Molly Seidel, she's going to accomplish what she set out for at the beginning of the season. She will win the women's 6K as she crosses the finish line. She is the individual champion here in women's cross country. If anything, coming out, you get a lot of expectations on you, coming right out of high school, and you never know how a college career is going to go. I mean, with mine, my first couple years definitely didn't go um, how a lot of, and they weren't successful along a lot of other people's definitions of success, but um, they helped me grow and helped me become stronger. And without those two years, I wouldn't be here today. Molly was an unstoppable force at this point. Her indoor times also drastically improved with the sub-9 3K, under 1520 for the 5K, and better yet, winning double titles for the indoor 3K and 5K at D1 Nationals. The fire only seemed like it had just lit for Molly Seidel, and she could certainly take two more titles during the outdoor season, right? Molly didn't seem to show any presence during outdoor season, with no documented race times for the entire season. She did graduate from Notre Dame, but surely something occurred during those few months. Was it an injury? Was it general training issues? Hell, was it more mold? While the former options are a possibility, it was also unfortunately something much more drastic and left Molly in a convoluted state of rigorous emotions. Upon her departure from Notre Dame, Molly had self-admitted into the Ready Clinic in Wisconsin for what was perceived to be a long battle dealing with an eating disorder that she cites derived from a form of OCD she has. This grueling stage in Molly's life wasn't necessarily a stage, but rather a stagnant fact of life she came to realize was something she needed to address and fix to some workable degree. Eventually, she came out of treatment and returned for one more indoor and outdoor track season to use up her eligibility. And while she wasn't performing at her 2015 levels, it was at least a step in the right direction for her to be on the track again in some capacity. On September 20th, 2017, Saucony would sign Molly as she joined their Freedom Track Club. And with some solid performances in the road racing department, things were slowly falling back into place again as she kickstarted her running career as an elite athlete. 2018 was a sufficient year for Molly's first stretch. She placed third in the Gate River 15K, placed second at the Portland Track Festival 10K, and ran a nice PR at USATF Champs in the 10K, running 32-24 and placing eighth. 
2019 was looking to be relatively similar, but was still struggling to consistently stay in the top 10 at these tighter races. In the latter half of the year, however, her coach Jonathan Green would eventually find a revelation that suited her running style perfectly. As opposed to doing 80 plus mile weeks with higher intensity, they decided to transition into higher mileage, but with a lower intensity approach with 100 plus mile weeks and more tempo and threshold oriented workouts. To say this plan worked would be an understatement, because she'd run 110.27 for her half debut at the Rock and Roll Half, a time that isn't even far off her 10k PR pace, and was also a good enough time to qualify for the US Olympic Trials in the marathon. Soon enough, she'd lower her time down to 109.35 at the Houston Half, placing 13th among an incredibly stacked field. Things had officially clicked for Molly again, and now she had clicked her ticket to her first Olympic Trials. There was a slight issue. Molly had never run a marathon before. Now, Molly does have an incredible base chock full of long runs under her belt, but she was still throwing herself into the wolves for not just her first marathon, but her first Olympic trials on top of that. Just about every US marathon hotshot was here, but if these trial races are as strategic as they usually are, this could very well play in Molly's favor quite well as we've seen in the past. The lead pack is massive from the start, and Molly hangs out in the middle right to just take it in that she's even in this race in the first place. Even at the half, she still maintains this serene, focused attitude, where her form looks composed, but soon enough, there's going to have to be some moves made if she plans on placing well. Around 20 miles in, Molly puts herself in qualifying position for her first time in the entire race. At 22 miles, the camera cuts back to the women's race, and Molly's hanging with the leader, Alephine Tulliamuk. With about a K to go, she has a minute lead over third, and any minute 20 over fourth. So as long as she finishes diligently, Molly will be flying out to Tokyo for her Olympic debut. Molly Seidel gets second in her first marathon ever. An incredible performance. Because that was sometimes the scariest part. And it's like your first time and all, the, all these women around me who have run 222, 224. So right. I'm like, well, shit, like... Was there some point in the race where you're like, I, I can do this, I can make the team? Or were you thinking that the whole way? The stretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, once they handed me that flag. <laughs> Molly Seidel is officially Tokyo bound. After battling some of the worst years of her life with injuries, mental strife, and more, she had pulled off one of the biggest underdog performances in American marathon history, and her socials had exploded with overwhelming support too. Now, normally the Olympic marathon would be scheduled a few months out, but due to COVID, it was pushed back an entire year. This, if anything, was a perfect opportunity for Molly to hone her craft as a pure distance phenomenon, and she solidified this identity at the London Marathon with a PR of 220 513, placing sixth on the international stage, and was now in the top 10 all-time list for American women. Furthermore, she had dropped Saucony to now become sponsored by worldwide sportswear company, Puma. She was more than prepared by now, and with a few half marathon and 10k tune-ups, it was now time to see what she had to offer against the best in the world. Bridget Koskai, 214 and off they go, the first few steps this very large field of the Women's Olympic Marathon. It's a fairly hot day in Tokyo, especially for a marathon. 77 degrees at the start of the race and could very well rise to the mid 80s by the time they're halfway through. There was no doubt it was going to be even more tactical than usual, so this opened the door for Molly to capitalize off of a pivotal situation like this, as she likely wouldn't be able to contest the sub-220 runners in a time trial-esque situation. The pace is incredibly pedestrian at the first mile, running around 6.15, and the 5k in just a tad over 18 minutes. Halfway through, the front pack had already dwindled down to 12 women, with Molly and Sally Kipugo being the only Americans remaining. The shade was a brief escape from the scorching sun here and there as they ran through the streets of Tokyo, but once exposed, would be picking off athletes one by one at the front pack. By 30k, it's eight women, and 5k later, only five women were in genuine contention. The pace had also picked up a bit, and it's starting to show adverse effects on their form, their hydration, but most importantly, their chances at securing a medal. World record holder Bridget Kosgai and Perez Jeptricher make the first move with just a few kilometers to go, but Molly just simply observes the two Kenyans and Israeli runner, Lona Kimtai Salpeter, pull away ever so slightly. Seemingly out of nowhere though, Salpeter just comes to a complete halt. And it's Molly that has a genuine shot at an Olympic medal with a 30 second lead over fourth place. With no one in sight and the Kenyans taking one too, Molly hits the straightaway and lets it all out as soon as she crosses that line as an Olympic medalist effort by Molly Seidel, she'll have an enormous celebration to take home the bronze, a big yellow bronze. Hi dad, hi mom. <laughs> They'll be very proud.
back at home. Molly Seidel is now the third ever American woman to medal in the marathon, with the last woman being Dina Castor in 2004. Battling the Tokyo heat, contesting the Kenyans for well over two hours, Molly had become an overnight sensation in the distance running world, especially in America, where her name was heard across the entire country. While this was easily Molly's best performance at this point, to her this was just, well, another race. It might sound silly, but she really was just getting started. And this would have become evident when she decided to rep her home country by partaking in the 2021 New York Marathon. To summarize this race, she kept up with the top dogs for a little over halfway, but sadly had to run the rest of it in no man's land once the top three took off pretty aggressively. Nevertheless, she maintained enough grit to finish fourth with her first 224 time and a nice 50k shmoney in prizes. Throughout 2021, she began to use her platform to hundreds of thousands of people to display her candid, bullshit-free attitude that many came to really enjoy. Whether it was through personable interviews, her YouTube channel, or Instagram meme page, she was very honest about her shortcomings and struggles she still deals with today. And it's a degree of relatability that has made her an easy watch for any distance running fans. In 2022, Molly had been gearing up for the World Championship Marathon and planned on doing the NYC Mini 10K as a last shakeout before go time. Little did people know she had been actively trying to get a therapeutic use exemption, or TUE, for her Adderall prescription in order to race, as Adderall is denoted as an illegal substance to use when in competition. She had reportedly applied six weeks before this Instagram post and was expecting to get a response in late June. Not only did this not occur, but Molly had picked up an injury along the way too, meaning she was out of worlds irregardless regardless if her TUE got approved or not. They still have yet to provide a decision to this day, even though WADA and USADA cite that it takes 21 days to get a decision back. It's entirely possible that Molly's TUE was denied and that she's been consistently reappealing, but the specificities of her process aren't open to the public at the moment. She still felt healthy enough to partake in the mountain race on July 22nd, 2022, doing the Speed Go 28K under the pseudonym Molly Shapiro. This race was brought to light on running forum Let's Run, where some had legitimate concerns or confusion confusion about this decision, whereas others seem to have much harsher implications. All that is known for sure is that Molly went at a pretty modest pace at a mountain course that someone close to her was doing under a different pseudonym. It could be a vacation, it could be a one-off race to test the body, it's really something that not even a deeper level can be extrapolated past these facts alone. Molly's last documented Strava activities were from early July 2022, where she looks to be in solid shape, but is still primarily straying away from anything running related. Lastly, she recently completed the Trek 100 to raise money for the Midwest Athletes Against Childhood Cancer. Molly Seidel's career has without a doubt been one of the more rocky paths to success in the running world, but her story is incredibly inspiring nonetheless. Dealing with a plethora of injuries, adaptation issues, and a myriad of mental health struggles, she still managed to come out stronger than ever with an Olympic medal in the marathon amidst other extremely impressive placements. Her underdog charm was one of the most exciting things to witness when she'd unsuspectingly pull off amazing placements after another, but now she's respected as one of the top marathon runners in the entire world. Her painfully straightforward and honest approach to mental health issues such as eating disorders, ADHD, OCD, depression, etc. has allowed those who look up to her to follow in the right footsteps to get the help they need, especially in a sport that demands so much from your mind and body. Being only 28, Molly has quite a few more years left in the tank to pull off incredible things for American distance running, and even though she still struggles with her demons at times to this day, she's shown time and time again that she can push them down into the ground and truly do fantastic things for the sport, but most importantly, herself. This has been the story of Molly Seidel, and thanks for watching. I was going to do that in um, the trials because I didn't think I was going to make it, so I wanted to um, take my Morton and put it into packets of Hellman, or Hellman's mayonnaise, yeah. and then just rip those in the middle of the marathon to just fuck with people. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I'm just here for the troll. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel. And if you want to see more track and field content like this, come on over and become a patron. Drop a sub and peep the Instagram too. I'll see you on whatever video I upload next and take care.